Guruji, last night there was mm. a big quake. Yes. Oh, wow. I thought I was dreaming. Mm -hmm. I thought that my bed was shaking and was part of the dream. Mm -hmm. And then when I woke up, I had to make sure there's, you know, an indication if something's moving. But uh, right. when I did wake up, it was like everything stopped moving. And mm -hmm. then I touched my feet to the ground. Everything stopped moving. Mm -hmm. And so I, I got up. But then finally I thought... Hmm, I didn't really know whether it was like real or not. It, it's isn't it like that also in real life? You know, sometimes you can't really tell which one is the reality, which one is the illusion. How can you tell the difference between the two? Well, I think um, when you face such things, you have to drop all philosophy. That's true. If earthquake, you just... Well, yeah, if illusion, this, everything, if you think illusion, everything is illusion. <laughs> That's true. That's now, if true. A, if Buddha had come to that realization that all this is illusion, mm -hmm. there would not be any teachings. Oh, yeah, that is true. There would true. not be any teachings. He saw Dukkha as Dukkha, and then he started to find out what is the reason. Mm -hmm. So if you consider everything illusion, then there's no Bhagavad Gita, no... No Mahabharat, no nothing, nothing. Everything is illusion. Yeah, but uh, it we need some kind of a, a, a master or an avatar to tell us that is an illusion, it because depends. it depends on the time. I mean, what do you mean? If the time calls for such kind of philosophy. Okay, if the time calls for action, it's action. Oh, of course, that is like just. Uh, yeah. Uh, an analogy what I was explaining about yeah. the earthquake. Of course, yeah. when you do feel it's earthquake, please go for, for exactly. cover, okay, exactly. for safety. Yeah. But I, I was talking about in daily life, mm -hmm. it's very difficult to, 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 to uh, you know, to tell the difference between, okay, of course, it's all an illusion, but then how can you find the truth? No, this is the thing is that this idea of all this is illusion, this is an idea, this is something that you have to consider in your mind. Mm -hmm. There's something that you have to realize. But when you're facing the world, you have to perform your duty, you have to perform your swadharma according to the need of the hour. So all this philosophy is about your mental setup. So that mm -hmm. if things go wrong, you are not depressed, you don't go down, you are not morally so down that you cannot work again, you know. This mm -hmm. philosophy has a value for that. I see. But it is not a substitute to working. So working. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not a substitute at all. Working is working. That is that Swadharma. Is. That, is, that is why we are here. Hmm. So all so these, we... yeah, all these... Uh, people who become monks and all that, they are actually running away from the reality. Yeah, uh, okay, if we look at it in another mm -hmm. way, mm -hmm. don't we need them also? I we mean, to play them. that role. Yes, we, if, if, if they are meant for that, if there's a prarap that is leading them there, and that, that can be found out right from the childhood. Mm -hmm. And then it Okay, this is Prarab and there is a call, but nowadays everybody can become a monk. It is, there's no such thing as somebody is telling you that this is your Prarab or something. They just become a monk. Hmm. And also being a monk has to be, a, what do you call that, adapted to the in situation that is facing in that uh, certain environment or um, how to contribute also to the to the world, isn't it? Oh yes, oh yes. But how many of them are? You know, there's so many uh, monks who are just uh, depending upon the donations from their devotees. They don't do anything. Hmm. You know, there are so many 
new temples coming up everywhere from all religions, not one particular religion. Yeah. Where so much suffering is there all around, you know, and then you have huge temples, you have got huge statues, you know, what is the need? Hmm. There are so many old temples that can be renovated. You can, if you like to go to temples, fine. If you don't go to a temple, you can stay home and you can pray at home, you know, but even nowadays when you're facing lockdowns and self-quarantine and all that, all the temples are empty. I see. And you were mentioning about statues and all that. Mm-hmm. There's a question here from mm-hmm. Odi. Mm-hmm. How symbols or Im- images of divine can trigger enlightenment? How can it trigger enlightenment? Not trigger, it is enlightenment. <laughs> if you can see the divine in a piece of stone, rock, it is enlightenment. You see, we are, we are expecting something from all these, and so we are never enlightened. When a mira looks at a pratima of Krishna, it is not a pratima, it is the likeness of Krishna. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But when we look at the pr- Pratima, you know, we have Pratimas everywhere. And sometimes I uh, just try to see the Pratima is clean or no, there's so much dust underneath, you know. Mm-hmm. So that is our devotion. We are, we are looking at Pratima just like a statue. So that, that it won't even trigger anything in nothing, us? Nothing, nothing. You see so much dirt here and there. I was just moving one statue and there was so much dust and dust. And every day there's somebody doing meditation, somebody doing yoga, somebody doing bhajan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you Leave it to the servant. Servant will do it. So it really depends on how we look at those statues. Exactly. Once you can see the divine, that's the end of it. That's the Is end that- of it. It's that simple, but it's not simple. simple. It is that simple. It is that simple. Hmm, How did Meera found Krishna? How did she find Krishna? Through the statue. Through the statue. And then, you know, all so many, so many saints, Tukaram, Surdas, you know, Tulsi. Ramakrishna. But for them, they were not statues. They were serving the Lord. Yes, statue is just simply statue. Hmm. Yeah, so that means it is the way we see things, how we perceive things. Exactly, our percep- perception, that is why Pashanti, Sarve Badrani Pashantu. May the perception be right. If the perception is not right, then statue is statue, is a piece of stone. <clears throat> it's a rock, it's a log of wood, that's all. Some artists have done some job, good job. But that's it, nothing else. That means we have to correct our perception first. Then only we can see the divinity in the statue. Once your perception is right, then only you can have devotion. Otherwise, you don't have devotion. Sometimes you go to temples, so many temples, you know, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. especially when we are in so much dirt, you know, and then uh, somebody is drinking water, the bottles are there, thrown away somewhere. Mm-hmm. Anywhere, mm-hmm. water everywhere, here, there, you know, there. When I go to, it's so beautiful. Go to, sometimes it's not beautiful. Inside is beautiful. Mm-hmm. Outside may be dirty, but you go to, everywhere is dirt. But why is that? It's like the principle of yoga itself is about cleanliness. Shorcha. It's shorcha. Socha, socha. Yeah. And therefore, there's no cleanliness, and we have to self-correct. We have to. We had to uh, see within, look at within. A lot of people are complaining. People are convert, converting to other religions. Of course, they'll convert, you know. You're not supplying them what they need. Hmm. So it's not through devotion first, then you can see divinity, but then it's through the right perception first. Right and perception, then... only then you can have devotion. Okay, so that is clear. Right perception, then only you have True. devotion. It True. cannot be vice versa. Cannot be vice versa.